When Airbus first originally launched the Airbus A350 concept to the market, there were actually three different versions, with the third being a smaller version called the A350-800. It had 182 orders and looked like it would become the must-have new aircraft for airlines across the world. But then, Airbus never built the aircraft and would go on to instead replace it with the A330neo program instead. In today's video, we will answer what was the Airbus A350-800, why was it cancelled, and why in retrospect, maybe Airbus should have built it after all. Just a quick hello from me, Nick, to say subscribe if you like this type of content. Back in the early 2000s, Airbus was in a tough spot. Boeing had jumped the gate with a new clean sheet design called the Boeing 787 Dreamliner that was gaining significant interest, despite Airbus saying it was a mere reaction to the popular A330 program. But on the urging of airlines, the airframe maker needed to design a swift new aircraft, one that matched the incredible technology of the 787 Dreamliner and replaced the Airbus A330 and A340 series. This A350 series was originally designed as an improvement on the A330 platform and would be called the A330-200 Lite with a new wing, tail, cockpit and new engines, but keep the same cross-section as the A330. This led many airlines to publicly and openly criticize Airbus, saying that it was a band-aid reaction to the Boeing 787, and that having gone to the effort of so many modifications, Airbus should just totally redesign the aircraft anyway into a clean sheet concept. And they did just that. When Airbus originally launched the A350 platform back on the 1st of December in 2006, there were three different versions. The Airbus A350-900 would be created first and be stretched to form that series for a longer range of more passengers and a Dash 800 shrink for those who wanted range but carry less passengers. Airbus would start developing the original A350, the Dash 900 first, before moving on to the other models as this was an effectively cheaper way to design an aircraft. So what exactly was the A350-800? The aircraft would have had a length of 60.45 meters and seat 276 passengers in a typical three-class configuration with a range of 8,245 nautical miles and carry around 259 tons. Airbus also felt confident that it would increase its range by a further 250 nautical miles, which is around about 460 kilometers, but this would have actually pushed its fuel burn well above the 787. Specifically, the Dash 800 would have been the spiritual successor to the Airbus A330-200 series, much like how the bigger versions of the A350 succeeded the A340. It would be used for airlines looking to operate transatlantic services or to fill in the upper market gap of around 270 passengers with a new modern aircraft, something that the Boeing 767 had enjoyed for so long. But not all of the aircraft in this series would see the light of day, and namely the Dash 800 would be cancelled only a few years later. The main reason wasn't that it wasn't popular, after all, it did actually have 182 orders, but rather because it wasn't inherently advantageous over the A350-900. The range between the two was minimal, with the Dash 900 having a range of only 145 nautical miles lower than the Dash 800, and then the Dash 800 would end up carrying less passengers than the Dash 900. So for those that had ordered the Dash 800, it was starting to look a lot less smart to simply not upgrade to the bigger Dash 900, which had relatively the same economics, but would make more money. 
First, from mid-2008, more and more customer orders for the Dash 800 slipped into upgrades for the bigger Dash 900 model. As production of the prototype bore on, Airbus realized a startling truth. There wasn't much need for the Dash 800 at all. Thus, at the 2014 Farnborough Air Show, Airbus sealed the fate of the A350-800 by revamping the A330 with a new engine option. And now the launch of a new baby for our successful white body family. Essentially, that the A330-200 light that they had discussed nearly a decade ago. Airbus would then encourage airlines with Dash 800 orders to either upgrade or switch over to the new Neo range, a range that was cheaper and effectively better in the market segment than the Dash 800. I believe that all of our customers will either convert to the A350-900 or the A330neo. The A330neo is the more efficient solution compared to the Dash 800. After the bulk of the airlines had switched away from the Dash 800, Airbus would go on to cancel the program and not look back. But perhaps Airbus would have been better served in a competitive sense to continue to make the Dash 800 way back then. Let me explain. You see, there is a small market gap in the Boeing lineup, right between the Boeing 737 and the Boeing 787 of around 200 to 250 seats. Boeing doesn't have an aircraft that efficiently fills this space, and this is now known as the middle of the market. On the lower side, they have the Boeing 737 going up to around 200 seats, and the 787-8 sits at the top at around 240 seats. Conversely, Airbus brings to the table in this space the A330 series and the A330neo-800, an aircraft remarkably known for its poor sales. So far, only 15 have been ordered compared to 316 of the bigger Dash 900 Neo. What I'm getting at here is that there is a market demand gap for both builders. This is because there are so many aircraft existing on the market that fill it, such as the Boeing 757, Boeing 767, and the Airbus A330 series. Airlines don't really need any new aircraft right now. But these aircraft are either old designs or not made anymore, leaving the path wide open for a new aircraft to enter the market namely the Boeing 797. If Boeing was to develop a 797 aircraft, it would be a clean sheet design that would fill in the 220 to 250 market and thanks to new technology would effectively be superior to the aging platform of the A330neo. Had Airbus developed an A350-800 shrink, it is possible that they could have filled in this market from the top and the new A321XLR filling in the market demand from the bottom, closing off the market to Boeing for decades to come. But alas, choosing to make the Dash 800 a shrink of the Dash 900 instead of its own design ended up making it too expensive to operate and effectively killing the program leaving the goal wide open for Boeing to build the 797. As for Airbus, you wonder why they didn't instead focus on building a stretch version of the A350-1000 to compete with the new Boeing 777-9. But perhaps that's exactly what they're working on and we will see it with the new A350neo, a video that I invite you to check out right here. Thanks so much for watching the quick video today about the A350-800 that was never built. It's a cool concept of a plane, but it didn't actually make sense to build it at the time. And speaking of things that make sense, we highly suggest that you subscribe if you like this content. And if you want to support the channel, then we have a great Patreon right here. You can find the link down in the description. Thanks so much for watching.